So today we have Burkhard Kanka here at the labs just to test uh, our new EMI RFI filter and uh, we've gotten our venerable spectrum analyzer out and uh, well first of all let's demonstrate um, what radio interference we get from uh, the earth and uh, Burkhard will show you what happens here but just before let me explain we have uh, set the spectrum analyzer um, to a frequency range from 0 to 20 megahertz. So that's exactly the range uh, we want to look at uh, where all the AM and shortwave stations are and where most of the emissions um, from uh, switch mode power supplies come from. And uh, at the y-axis, at, at the vertical axis, uh, we have 10 dB level per uh, square, so that means on the up to side we have 10 millivolts and here the noise is in the 1 microvolt range. Now let's take a look at what happens when we connect um, the oscilloscope, uh, no not the, the uh, probe, when we connect uh, the ground from the spectrum analyzer, which is connected um, to the protective earth conductor, when we connect this um, uh, this ground uh, to uh, the uh, protective earth from another wall ward. And let's see what happens. Usually you would expect nothing happens, because when we connect ground to ground, or earth to earth, so there should be no, uh, no uh, signal, but here you can see uh, there is nothing like a clean earth. Uh, even what uh, should be an absolutely zero level uh, has radio frequency interference uh, about uh, in the range 30 dBs uh, above the noise floor. And that's really bad, so if you expect that simply uh, grounding or earthing your circuit then you will get rid of uh, EMI or uh, RFI um, emissions. No, that, that's not true. Uh, in today's world uh, the earth uh, is really, because of all the other switch mode supplies which are grounded and earthed, uh, there's a, a lot of noise and a lot of dirt in the spectrum. Okay, now let's see what happens if we connect the spectrum analyzer with the uh, DC output from a simple, uh, cheap um, switch mode power supply. So please, Burkhardt, do the connection. And now we get the, uh, the whole range of um, emissions from the switch mode power supply. Um, above the EMI or RFI uh, emissions from ground because we, we only connected the uh, center pin of the, um, of the oscilloscope probe with the uh, switch mode power supply. And it doesn't make any difference if we connect it to the uh, so-called ground of the uh, switch mode power supply or if we take the uh, DC output, uh, the disturbances, uh, the emissions, the noise is the same. So now what happens if we additionally connect ground from the spectrum analyzer to ground of the switch mode power supply? Well then of course the, um, the uh, uh, noise from the earth loop that we would otherwise have, that, that is uh, diminished and we see mainly now only the emissions from the switch mode power supply. So and you can see it goes up to the uh, millivolts uh, range in uh, level, so that's quite a lot and if you do um, really sensitive uh, either analog measurements or uh, radio reception, uh, then a millivolt of level in, in uh, this range, which is the whole spectrum from uh, long wave, medium wave, also AM radio and short wave, uh, you will only hear noise and not, in, in the worst case, not a single transmitting station. So, 
That will be it to show how large the disturbance is, the noise that comes from the emissions from a switch mode power supply is. Now let's take a look at the next step, uh, what our filter can do against that. Okay, we have connected uh, the switch mode power supply here to the input of the two filters which are uh, in parallel. And now let's see first of all what the, uh, let's call it medium car current filter, the two amps filter for universal purposes, how the emissions are at the output of the filter. And they are below the noise of uh, the spectrum analyzer which means we have at least 60 dB damping of all uh, radio frequency emissions from, well, let's say, we can't see here the very low frequencies below 100 kilohertz, uh, but we have a damping of at least minus 60 dB in the range from 100 kilohertz to 20 megahertz, and I think that's quite impressive, and it's only a perf board prototype and perf board does not derive po from perfect, no pun intended. Uh, it's, it's the most imperfect um, high frequency prototype build up you can do. And if even this perf board uh, prototype is, well, for me quite impressive, um, how it filters out the, all the emission, uh, that's uh, uh, better than I expected. Now let's take a look at the high current at the 10 amps filter, which is a bit more simple, but can... Um, can deliver up to 10 amps. And what do we see? Well, there is some remaining noise. It's not as good and that's also exactly what I expected. Uh, the uh, filter that is here in the uh, current compensated choke, uh, it's not as good as this big Telema brown type one. Uh, anyway, it's, it's still, I would say, a, a damping of around 40 uh, dB. So it's 20 dB is worse, but if you need the 10 amps, uh, or more than 2 amps, then uh, it's still quite uh, good. So, for a first impression, I think uh, we can be quite content and can continue developing um, a um, PCB for the, uh, for the filter. So, now you still might say, well, Roger and Burkhardt, uh, but that was not a real measurement because you had no load connected. Well, the, we did this on purpose because we first wanted to show uh, the efficiency of the filter without a load. And now let's take a look at what happens with a load. Um, we have the uh, here the emissions, the spectrum, uh, so until now without a load uh, in front of the filter and now let's see what happens with the emissions um, when we put a load on. We've, we've connected um, some light bulbs um, and they uh, take about 300 milliamps and you see what a big difference. Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, how the emissions increase when you uh, put a load to the switch mode power supply. And it went up, I would say, at least 30 dBs more emissions uh, with the load. And now let's see how the filter works with this really great emissions. And first, uh, let's take a look at the uh, 10 amps filter, which is not so effective. Let's see what uh, remains of the emissions when we put our filter to this, uh, when we put the spectrum analyzer at the output of the filter and you still see, well, there is some remaining emissions, but it's a lot lower than the signal and the, the EMI and RFI emissions uh, in front of the filter. So the filter is effective, but uh, not, uh, well, perfect, not perfect anyway, uh, but there's still a lot of remaining noise, especially uh, when we count, this is four, uh, two me megahertz. So the first uh, square here is, uh, the first division is in, in the AM radio range, but in the short wave range, we still have a lot of emissions. Now let's uh, switch over to the two amps filter, which uh, should be more effective. And Burkhardt is fiddling around a bit. 
Just remember it's a proton. Well, that's uh, much better than the 10 amps filter. So I think we can live with that. We, we can verify that uh, all the emissions are around uh, 60 dB lower than uh, before the filter. And uh, the AM range and the lower shortwave range is completely clean. And only when well, it's count 2, 4, 6 in the range 8 to 12 or 14 megahertz. We still have some remaining emission. Uh, but the cleaning up um, effect of the filter is uh, quite impressive and I'm quite content really with the result. So that was it for first look at the uh, prototype um, PCB perf board build up of our uh, EMI RFI suppression filter. And I would say for this time it's enough. Uh, we say goodbye from Kanka Labs. Bye from Roger and bye from Burkhardt. Until next time.